Hello friends, today we are going to discuss a very important topic, design of traffic signals. Traffic signals are provided to provide orderly movement of traffic, to increase traffic handling capacity of the intersection, and they can also reduce frequency of certain types of accidents, particularly rear end accidents, and signal can replace traffic police. Three colors are generally used, and the in British practice, the, it is, the sequence is like this, that we show the red, then amber plus red together, then green, and then again amber. Whereas the Indian practice and American practice is to show red, then green, and then amber. Now here, amber is shown only after termination of green, whereas in British practice, amber is shown before and after the start of the phase, either green or red. When amber is provided between termination of green and start of the red, it is called clearance amber. When it is provided between termination of red and start of the green, it is initial amber. And a signal phase is part of the cycle allocated to a traffic movement receiving the right of way. Say, for example, in phase one, if you provide this green time, this much green time, then this is the signal phase receiving right of way for phase one. And for remaining period, it will remain either amber or red. Similarly for phase two. Now, this is what is called all red time. That is, the, that is the time when both phases will show, all signals at the intersection will show red indication. And this is to allow the vehicles which remain in the intersection area at the end of the amber to clear the intersection before the start of the green of the next phase. Now, a few definitions before we go for signal design. Cycle, the time of one complete sequence of signal indications from green to green. That is the complete cycle. So it includes green phase, amber phase, and red phase. Phase is part of cycle allocated to one or combination of movements. So here we say green phase, amber phase, or red phase. Similarly, the interval is a discrete portion of the cycle, signal cycle during which an indication remains unchanged. So during this time period, signal remains green. So it is green interval. This is amber interval of four seconds and then red interval of some duration. Generally, the Webster method is very popularly used and IRC also suggests use of Webster method for signal design. The basic equation is given here that optimum cycle length is 1.5 L plus 5 upon 1 minus summation of Yi. Where C naught is optimum cycle length, L is the total loss time per cycle which is given by N into small L plus R any number of phases, L average loss time per phase, and R is total red time per cycle. So you can imagine here that loss time will depend upon the number of phases. More are number of phases, more will be the loss time. And this Yi is critical lane volume divided by saturation flow. I'll explain this, what is the meaning of critical lane volume when we go for example, and this saturation flow as per British method is given by this equation 525 into W, W is the width at the stop line. And once you know the cycle length, then the green time, effective green time available in a cycle can be apportioned to different phases by this rule. Y1, Y2, Y3 in the ratio of Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4. Y1, Y2, Y3, 4 are Q1 upon S1, Q2 upon S2, Q2 upon S3. For critical lane and the, the procedure for signal design is reduced to now five steps. First is phase design. You decide number of phases. It can be the simplest design will be with two phases. Then we can add a phase for right turning traffic from one direction or from all directions. So it can be either three phase or four phase. Then 
you can also add a phase for pedestrians if they are also present at the intersection. Then determination of amber time and clearance time, which is three to six seconds. And I have explained this in the in another video on dilemma zone, how to determine this clearance time. Then we find out the cycle length using that Webster equation and apportion the green time. Pedestrian crossing requirements can also be considered. As I told you, it can you can have a separate phase for pedestrians. So the clearance interval or change interval and clearance interval, which is called CP. Now that is all red. It includes basically all red time plus amber time. This is what is called CP. And it depends upon the reaction time, the design speed, that is the approach speed, A of acceleration rate, W is the width of the intersection, and L is the length of the vehicle. So this I have explained in my video on dilemma zone. Now let us take one example to illustrate the procedure of signal design. A simple example will be when you have a fixed time two phase signal at an intersection having four arms. And these are the traffic volume data which are obtained from field survey. It is always convenient to number all these approaches either one, two, three, four or if you draw a north direction here, then this becomes eastbound approach and this becomes westbound approach. Similarly, it is northbound approach and this is southbound approach. So let us say eastbound approach has a approach volume of 900 vehicles per hour and westbound has a traffic volume of 650 vehicles per hour and approach width is four meter on east-west road. The northbound approach has a volume of 800 vehicles per hour. Approach width is 3.6 meter. And the southbound approach has a traffic volume of 750 vehicles per hour with approach width of 3.8 meter. And I also assume that time loss due to starting delay is two seconds, that is your amber time, and all red time is four seconds. So the solution of this problem can be easily made by framing this table. You take the approach eastbound, westbound, northbound, southbound in first row and mention their width, approach width in the second row, four meter, four meter, 3.6 meter and 3.8 meter. The census of flow can be calculated. That is 525 into four, 525 into four, 525 into 3.6 and 3.8. Now Q value is given in the question. It is 900, 900 vehicles per hour, 650, 800, 750. So you calculate S upon Q. That is your flow ratio. 0 0.428, 0 0.309, 0 0.423 and 0 0.375. Now since this is a two phase signal, so in one phase you will allow all movements from east west corridor and in another phase you will allow from north south so the critical the critical flow ratio for phase one will be higher of these two values that is meaning of critical here is the approach which will require more green time so that will decide the cycle length and similarly critical flow ratio for the second phase on northbound southbound will be 0 0.423 higher of these two values so why one is four to eight and why two is four to three? So summation of why I will be 0 0.428 plus 0 0.423, that is 0 0.851. And remember total lowest time is two seconds and all red time is four seconds. So the lowest time per cycle will be N into L plus R. There are two cycles, sorry, there are two phases. So N is two. L is two second and all that time is four. So eight second is loss time. So C naught is equal to 1.5 into eight plus five, one minus summation of yi that is 0 0.851 and that is 114 seconds. Now it is customary to provide total cycle length in multiple of five and therefore let us say we provide cycle length of 115 sec seconds. Now this cycle length is to be divided into two phases. So effective green time available will be 
115 second minus lost time that is 8 second so 107 second now this 107 second will be a portion like this for phase 1 let us say north south green for north south will be the flow ratio for north south divided by total flow ratio that is critical flow ratio into c0 minus l so 0 0.428 divided by 0 0.851 that is total flow ratio into the effective green time 107 that comes 54 second and similarly for east west it is coming 53 second so 53 plus 54 that makes 107 plus 8 second of loss time that makes your complete cycle length 115 so we can now draw the phase diagram for phase 1 north south green time is 54 second amber time is 2 second so the, the green phase will start at say at 0 time and the green will continue for 54 seconds after that you have 2 seconds of amber time so it is 56 second now and remaining is your red time the second phase east, east west it will have all red time of 4 seconds green time 53 second and amber time 2 second so the red time here will be up to this point after amber you provide 4 second of all red time so up to 60 seconds it will be red and then green will start and it will it will remain there for 53 seconds so 113 and then after that you provide 2 seconds of amber and that completes your cycle so that is how a signal is designed, a simple problem. Now in the second problem, we will take a partition phase also and turning moments also. Example 2 is the traffic flow and geometry details are given in this figure and design a four phase signal with one phase exclusively for the pedestrians. Assume any data suitably. Now here data basically means the duration of amber time and all red time. Amber time is only 3 to 6 seconds and therefore we will take 4 seconds as the amber time and all red time is also 4 seconds. So solution here, the 4 phase will be like this. The first phase will be for let us say east west, all 3 movements moving together. The second phase will be north south straight and left, left turn and the third phase would be right turn from north and south. And the fourth phase will be the pedestrian phase when all vehicular traffic will be stopped. This is, that is how it is shown. The pedestrian movement is shown by dotted lines and the vehicular movement is stopped. Let us first discuss the pedestrian phase. Now you can see here the width of the north-south road is 18.5 meter. That is two lanes of 3.5 meter in each direction plus 4.5 meter median. And this width of east-west corridor is 12 meter, 1 meter wide median and 5.5 meter approach width. So this is too large a width to cross by the pedestrian and therefore let us divide or let us permit crossing in two stages. So we can say that width to be crossed is higher of the these two 7 meter or 5.5 meter that is 7 meter time to cross from curve to the median or from median to the curve will be 7 meter divided by pedestrian speed this is 1.2 meter per second that is 5.8 second let us say 6 second now remember this is not the green time for pedestrians this is the pedestrians clearance interval and during this period there will be no signal displayed to the pedestrians and it will be followed by 4 second of amber display and then red, red phase will start. Green phase will be before this end clearance interval. So let us say we provide 8 second of the green time. So total time for pedestrian phase will be 8 second of green, 6 second of pedestrian clearance time during which generally flashing don't work, sign is flashed and 4 second is the amber time. That, come, that is 18 seconds. Now let us calculate the traffic volume for each vehicular phase. Now in this case for each bound approach for example there is no separate right turn lane, no separate left turn lane and therefore these two will be converted into equivalent number of through going vehicles. 
what UK method says, which is also supported by IRC code, that if left turners are more than 10%, then take one left turn equal to 1.25 through going vehicle. If it is less than 10%, then one is to one. And one right turn will be equal to 1.75 through going vehicle. So you can convert this traffic into equivalent number of through going vehicles. For eastbound approach, it will be 733 vehicle per hour. And for westbound approach, it will be 728 vehicle per hour. Now, see here, this we have not multiplied this 45 by 1.25 because 45 is less than 10% of 490. The succession flow is for 525 into W and W here is approach width 5.5 meter and therefore it will be 2,888 2, vehicle per hour of green. For north-south right turning traffic, the succession flow is given by this equation. For exclusive right turn lane, it is 1800 divided by 1 plus 1.52 upon R, where R is the radius of the turn. And here it is given 20 meter. So for 20 meter, this S will be 1673. So this will be used when we discuss the right turn phase. Now for phase one, which we say east-west, the flow ratio for each bound approach will be the volume upon succession flow. That is 733 divided by 2888, 0.254. And for west bound approach, it will be 0.252. Now during single phase, all these movements are moving. And therefore, higher of these two will be the critical flow ratio for phase one. That is 0.254. Similarly, for phase two, where through movement and left turning movement from north and south will move, S will be the same, 525 into S, 7, 3675 vehicle per hour. And because S is same for both the approaches, therefore, higher of these two traffic volume will decide the critical flow ratio. So Q for northbound approach is 950 plus 80. That is 1030 and for southbound it is 1055 and therefore this will decide the critical flow ratio. Critical flow ratio for phase 2 will be 1055 divided by S3675 0.287. That is the critical flow ratio. And for phase 3 when right turn from north and south move, here also S is same for two directions that is 1673 vehicles per hour of green. And therefore, Y3 will be higher of the two flows, that is 80, sorry, 280 or 250. So 280 divided by 1673, that is 0 0.167. So now you have the critical flow ratio for each phase. So total sum of these flow ratios will be 0 0.708. And lowest time, let us provide amber of 4 seconds, all red time after each vehicular phase, 4 seconds. Now this is important. All red time is not provided after pedestrian phase. The pedestrian phase is of 18 seconds and therefore the total loss time will be 18 plus N, L plus R. N is number of vehicular phases. So that is 18 plus 3 into 4 plus 4 plus 4 because red time will be 2. All red time will be two times, that is 38 seconds. So that gives you the optimum cycle length 1.5 L plus 5 upon 1 minus summation of yi, put value of L38 and summation of yi 0 0.708, it gives you optimum cycle length 212 seconds. And I told you it is generally capped in the multiple of 5 seconds and therefore let us take 210 seconds. Now here you should know that the Webster method suggests that cycle length should not be more than 120 seconds. So it can be restricted to 120 seconds, but in that case, there will be queue on each approach and all vehicles will not be able to clear the intersection during their first green. So let us provide a cycle length of 210 seconds. And you can find out what is the green, green time for phase one, for phase two and for phase three by usual method. That is G1 is equal to Y1 upon Y 
into C O minus L. That gives you 61 second. Similarly, you have G2, G3. Now here, the effective green time will be 172 seconds only. That is 210 minus loss time, 38 seconds. So now you can provide the signal phase diagram. The first phase, which is through traffic, or you can say all three movements from east and west side, green is 61 second. So let us say it should start from zero time till 61 second will be green. Then next four seconds will be amber and then remaining time will be red period. The second phase, for second phase, green will start at 69th second. That is four seconds of all red time here. Add amber time here of 70 seconds, that is 139. And then another four seconds for amber and then remaining time will be red period. Similarly, for phase three, green time will start at 147th second. Again, giving a all red time of four second. And then you have green time, one up to 188 second, amber time 190 second second and remaining is your red time. For pedestrian phase, we do not provide all red time. Green will start immediately after amber. So green time is eight second. And for next six second, this will be flashing don't walk or no signal at all. And then four second of amber time and that completes your cycle of 210 seconds. So thanks friends for watching this video. You can write your comment in the comment box.